The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of primeval dread, to the fear you can hear. Do things have souls? Do natural forces embody malicious spirits? That was the primitive belief of mankind, stifled, they say, by the rise of civilization. But is it dead? Or does there move within us still the distorted shadow of some long-forgotten lore, dark images we dare not face? Jeff Moore never found the answer, but the question shattered his life. Stop. Stop. You devil chin I defy you. You called me and I'm here, Chindi. I'm here. I defy you. No. No. Jeff, 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 don't what? wake up. What? It's a dream. You're having a nightmare. Oh, wake up. Katie. Katie, that terrible dream oh, again. Don't be relaxed. Just the storm. The horse again. The horse galloping toward me. The rider wrapped in a long black shroud. When he turned its face to me, it was a mass of melting flesh. It was the face of the man we buried out there in the sand. Katie. Katie. Our mystery drama, The Devil God was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Mary Jane Higby and stars Ruby Dee and Mandel Kramer. The main character of our drama tonight will never appear. I think you will feel his presence, however as thousands have felt it through the long centuries that brought us out of the prehistoric cave to the place where we now stand. As Jeff and Katie Moore, a young couple from New England, felt it among the stark cliffs of the Southwest. But let Katie tell you about it. That storm last night shook this old house like a terrier shaking a rat. I lay trembling in my bed while it crashed its way towards us, then burst in a roar overhead. Jeff started screaming in his sleep, the way he does nowadays. And I ran into help me. Help me. Please help me. Jeff, Jeff, darling, wake up, wake up. It's just a storm. It's the horse again. The horse galloping toward me, the rider wrapped in a long black shroud. Suddenly he turned his face to me and it was a mass of melting flesh, the face of the man we buried out there in the sand. Oh, Katie. It's all right, dear. You'll be all right, all right. Katie, Katie, am I ever going to get over this? Funny thing about a vicious storm, how innocent and clean the world looks afterward. In the morning, the air was so shimmering clear that for a moment I thought I was back in Antelope Valley that day I first saw it nestling in the desert mountains. I didn't know then the terror hidden in those hills. I wish I had known. Dear God, how I wish I had known. Uh, Sorry about the shape this road's in, folks. This is a road? (laughs) Are we on our own property yet, Mr. Purdy? It will be as soon as we cross the little Yaki River. It's only 20 miles or so to the house from there. Mm -hmm. Your uncle left you a fine ranch. You're going to be mighty happy when you see what you've got. I'll be mighty happy if I've still got my teeth. (laughs) It's awfully nice of you to bring us all the way out here. Well, couldn't let you come out alone the first time. You being strangers to this part of the country and all. 
Now, when we get to the top of this rise, you're going to see a grade A job of government bungling. A few months ago, they sent out some fancy eastern engineers. First thing they did was pull out the bridge that was here and move it ten miles downriver. Never stopped to find out there was a house 20 miles back, and this bridge was the only access. Oh, dear. Well, what do we do? Uh, the jeep won't make it through the gully. Yeah. At least I, I think it will. Hmm. i better walk down first, though, to make sure. You sure I come with you? No. No use both of us getting our feet wet. And I can see why he said we'd never make it in our own car. Honey, when I think of your uncle sinking all of his money in this godforsaken country... Godforsaken? Why, it's beautiful. Come on, darling, you've seen too many John Wayne movies. It's valuable land. I know, I know. And I'm lucky. I married a beautiful woman who turned out to be an heiress. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't know my Uncle Bush was making me his heir. I'd have thought you were marrying me for my vast holdings. <laughs> <laughs> and I just hope that among the vast holdings, he left a bottle of scotch. <laughs> Because I'm going to need it if Joe Purdy manages to get us across these craters of the moon. Well, okay. I just wanted to be sure that there was no quicksand. We're really going down into that ravine. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, it's awfully steep, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> well, made it. Uh, shook up. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Oh. Well, that's the little Yaki River. A river? Yeah, there wasn't a quart of water in it. Don't oh, now. But don't you ever try what I just did. Come a flash flood and it'll be a wall of water rushing down. You know, I've seen little jackrabbits caught in it. Even rattlesnakes. That's why your uncle was so mad about that bridge. You can't get to your land from the new one without scaling the cliff. What? Mr. Purdy, wait a minute now. Are you saying that once you leave us, we are completely cut off, trapped? Oh, no. The ranch hands can always get you out. The Kenneth, he's your foreman. He talks English real good. Well, what do the others talk? Their own language. They're Indians. Indians? Why didn't anybody tell us all this? Well, no, I wouldn't worry. Well, your uncle had the best ranch hands in the state. That's why Antelope Valley is such a fine money-making outfit. Well, now, Jeff, don't borrow trouble. Wait till we get there, see what it's like. I know what it's like. Flash floods, quicksand, rattlesnakes, and six feet of snow. Katie, we are moving into a trap. But Jeff's misgivings faded when Antelope Valley lay spread before us. A long white L-shaped house, half hidden in cottonwood trees and bordered by bright flowers. And winding in the distance, the gully that marked the upper course of the little Yaki. Some Indians were standing around the corral. I waved, but they only stared back. And here we are, folks. Well, after what we've been through, this is kind of like Shangri-La, isn't it? We'll just get the luggage out. Oh, there's your foreman. Hi, Ken. Hi, Joe. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Moore, Kenneth Yazzie. Yes. Uh, nice Hi to meet you, Kenneth. Yes. I'll uh, help with your bags. Well, thank you. And if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to work. We're just finishing up. Uh, all right, if I show you around later. Oh, oh yes. Go ahead. The freezer's well stocked, isn't it, Ken? It sure is. A couple of sides of beef and a lot of game. Now, don't you carry anything, Mrs. Moore. Just get the door for us, please. I've had the house open and airing for you all day. What a oh, nice hey. room. What a great fire. And look at this. You wouldn't expect a picture window in a ranch house, now would you? Oh, your uncle built himself a real modern... Oh, oh look, look, huh? up on the hill. <gasps> what a beauty. Oh, you mean the horse. Hey, that's a palomino, isn't it? What? Isn't that a palomino out there? Oh, it's gone. I think you must be mistaken. I think you saw a deer. No, no, it was a horse, oh, all right. Oh, a wonderful golden mane. I'm going to get some sugar and see if I can. No. Well, Leave it alone. Why, Ken? That horse is no good, Joe. Hmm? Well, what do you mean? There's a bad feeling about that horse, Mrs. Moore. Leave her alone. She doesn't belong here. Whose horse is it? Bad feeling. Don't go near her. Let her go. But doesn't she belong to us? Doesn't she? Believe me, Mrs. Moore. 
You staying overnight, Joe? <laughs> no, no. I have to get back to the office. The title company won't run itself, you know. Well, you'll stay and have a drink with us, won't you? Uh, the boys want to talk to you, Joe. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll go out to the corral and say hello, and, uh... <laughs> yes, Mr. Moore, I reckon I better have one for that road. We'll be right back. Well, what do you suppose that was all about? The horse, you mean? Hmm. That Indian looked so funny. I thought he looked frightened. A valuable animal like that shouldn't be running around loose. Oh, come on, darling. I, I want to see the rest of the house. Um, this... Oh, look at this kitchen. It's, it's huge. You can walk right inside the closet. Boy, hey, your Uncle Bush Hyatt was no teetotaler. I'll say that for him. <laughs> Get the ice, honey, and I'll see if I can find some glasses. Mm. There's enough liquor here to last the whole winter. What are you staring at? That horse again. Hmm? Look through this window. <gasps> it's heavenly. Oh, Jack. Boy, Joe Purdy's sure deep in conversation with those Indians. They're kind of a sullen-looking lot, aren't they? No, I don't, uh, I don't think I would exactly call this place heavenly, honey. Hostile seems a better word. You don't like it. Oh, Jeff, give it a few weeks' trial and... Look, it's beautiful, Kate, but... Oh, I guess I'm just tired. Oh! Hey, we're well, in the kitchen here, oh, getting it all together. Yeah. What do you have? Bourbon or scotch? Oh, bourbon. Bourbon's fine. I haven't found the soda yet. Will tap water be all right? <laughs> Never mind the water. Uh, I'm going to ask you folks to, uh, put me up for the night. Oh, wonderful. Oh, sure. Wonderful. Well... Here's to a happy life in Antelope Valley. Yes, cheers, Joe. Cheers. You don't mind if I call you that, do you? <laughs> of course not. Everybody does. Well, I, uh, I have to ride out behind the hills tomorrow. Oh, why? There's a job to do back there. Nasty job, too. The ranch hands asked me if I'd do it. Why don't they do it themselves? No, they can't. There's something to do with their religion. Oh, and by the way, I want to talk to you about that. You got the best cow hands in the state. Now you'll get along just fine if uh, if you respect their ways, their religion. Well, what is their religion? Well, as near as I can figure, the Indian lives in a different world from us. He lives in a world of spirits. Where we see a cloud, he sees a spirit. Where we hear the wind, well, that's animatism. Well, I wouldn't know about that. But the important thing is not. To rile those spirits. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll drink to that. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. And I'd advise you to be. Because, well, I've seen some mighty strange things in my time. And now about that horse, uh, Palomino. Now, how about that? Now, is it ours or isn't it? Well, I figure it isn't. You see, anything the lightning god has touched belongs to him. You mean the horse was struck by lightning? Mm. It didn't hurt her. One of those freak accidents. But now she belongs to the lightning god. He'll strike down anybody who tries to take what is his. Hmm. So, uh, leave her alone, okay? Oh, come on. That's nonsense. Plain superstition. It's what they believe. Well, Kenneth doesn't go for this rubbish, does he? He seems like an educated man. He was a track star at UCLA. Almost made the Olympics. But Ken is an Indian. I see. All right, now look, 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 let's get this straight. The horse belongs to this ranch, right? And it's a valuable animal, isn't it? I reckon so. Now, you're saying that I can't keep her, can't even sell her because of some whammy that somebody's put on her? I'm saying you won't go near that horse if you know what's good for you. But that's crazy. Now, don't be so sure. Well, you don't believe this, Dribble, do you? I don't believe it, and I don't not believe it. Well, that it. horse is going back into the barn. It's ours, and I'm keeping it. You take that attitude and you'll be in trouble. Bad trouble. That is superstition right out of the Dark Ages. Older than that, I reckon. But it's their belief. And this would be one hell of a time to try to talk them out of it. They've got a dead man lying back in the hills to prove it. A dead man? <laughs> if you're so cocksure about these things, ride out with me tomorrow when I go bury him. <laughs> leaves the two men still stubbornly arguing the pros and cons of superstition 
to stand at her bedroom window watching the motionless stars. As one springs to sudden life and goes skimming across the sky, she makes a wish, then smiles at herself. A meteor, nothing more. What power has it to grant good fortune? Troubled, she turns to her bed and her first night's sleep in the eerie stillness of Antelope Valley. I'll be back shortly with Act Two of The Devil God. A profound stillness has settled over the remote ranch, broken only by the occasional howl of a coyote. In spite of her uneasiness about the gruesome task her city-bred husband has agreed to undertake with Joe Purdy, Katie Moore has fallen into a deep sleep. She awakes with a start. Someone is moving about the room. Jeff? Oh, I didn't mean to wake you, honey. I'm sorry. Oh, it's still dark. It sure is. When Joe Purdy says early, he means it. I'll get you breakfast. No, no, no. We've had breakfast. Don't get up. Katie, you know where that blue cotton shirt of mine is? I think I put it... Oh, yes. Second drawer down. Okay, then. So how's the girl of the Golden West? Did, did you hear anything? No. Like what? I thought I heard hoofbeats. <sighs> Toss me my dressing gown, will you? Whew, it's chilly, isn't it? Yes, there, there she is again. The Palomino. Oh, poor thing. Probably hungry. You know, Katie, this whole setup seems fishy. You mean about the horse? The whole situation on this ranch. After you went to bed last night, I found out the name of this guy that we're going to bury. Little Gambler. And whose father do you think he is? Kenneth Yazzie's father? That's right, our college graduates. Now, superstition or no superstition, you don't leave your father lying out where the buzzards and coyotes can get at him. Ooh, Jeff, don't. Mm. I'm sorry, honey, but... I tell you, I won't be surprised if we find him shot through the head or stabbed in the back. If we can tell from what's left of him. There's something phony going on. I'm not sure Joe isn't part of it. Oh, no, Jeff. Well, you take this guy's name, Little Gambler. Now, honey, you know that horse is worth a lot of money. You think there was a fight over the horse? I don't know. And I sure don't go for all this mumbo-jumbo about lightning gods and rainbow gods and spirits of death. It's too easy and out. Can you see, is that horse still there? Uh-huh. Poor thing, it needs a good currying. Now, as soon as I'm dressed and going out, I'm putting it into the barn. And Katie, you see that it stays there. <laughs> The sun was beginning to rise as I watched wiry Joe Purdy and my cheerful blonde husband ride out of sight. I turned to unpacking and settling into my new home. Just after midday, a sudden commotion drew me out into the yard. The barn door was open, and in the dark interior, a golden mane flashed through the air as the column reared suddenly. I could make out two shadowy figures behind us. No, stop! Stop, don't, don't drive her out! Stop that! My husband put the horse in the barn. She's to stay there. Now, don't let her out! Now, doesn't either of you speak English? Something wrong, Mrs. Moore? Yes. My husband put the Palomino in the barn this morning, and I caught these men trying to drive her out. I don't think so, Mrs. Moore. Oh, yes, I saw them. The horse is no good. You mean she's vicious? That's absurd. She's as gentle as a lamb. No good for the ranch. She was my uncle's horse, wasn't she? Kenneth, I'm serious about this. We're keeping her. And from now on, I want the boys to take good care of her. They have other work to do. Oh, come on. All this fuss is because she was struck by lightning, isn't it? Let's settle this once and for all. This was my uncle's ranch. Now my husband and I occupy the place that he did. Your uncle understood Indian ways. I understand, too. I know how the ranch hands feel about the lightning god, and I sympathize. But I don't for one minute believe in it. And I don't think you do. Mrs. Moore, let the horse go. Otherwise, I cannot be responsible. You don't have to be. Just do as I say. He turned on his heel and left me standing there in the blazing heat. Tears of fury stung my eyes. 
I watched a buzzard circling in the clear sky. Then the thought of Jeff and the grisly job he had set out to do sent a shiver through me and I ran back into the cool ranch house. I prowled restlessly from room to room until in my uncle's office I came across a photograph album. A pictorial record of his days as a trader on the Indian reservation. A recent snapshot, not yet pasted in the book, fell out in my lap. On it, my uncle had written, Scheherazade, first prize, Santa Fe, 1972. It was the Palomino. I was so engrossed in the album that I, I didn't notice the change in the weather. A wind had come up and a door started banging. And I ran to fasten it. And I could see the cottonwoods outside writhing in the wind. A few Indians had gathered near the corral. One of them, taller than the rest, wore a big black hat. He was pointing to the east, where a dark, menacing cloud hung over the hills. I felt stifled. I sat down, gasping for breath, and watched while the ugly thing spread like some monstrous growth across the sky. Shortly after sunset, Jeff and Joe Purdy returned. Honey? Oh, Jeff! Jeff, I'm so glad you're back. Not as glad as I am. What a day. Nasty chore. I reckon it gave your husband a bad turn. You better oh, believe it. You look exhausted, darling. Aren't you coming in, Joe? No, no, I'll just return our ponies to the corral, and then I gotta get on my way. Mm. I wanna keep ahead of that storm, at least till I cross the little yaki. You'll excuse me, Mrs. Moore? Oh, of course. Oh, goodbye, goodbye. Thanks, Joe, for everything. Go on, Joe. I'll see you soon. Huh? Sure, sure. I'll keep in touch. Oh, Ken, yeah. take these ponies. I've got to get going. Okay. You'll make it if you hurry, Joe. So long. Oh, come on in, darling. Yeah. <sighs> Those cow ponies are tough little animals. I don't think anything else could have made this trek. It was rugged, huh? You'd never believe it, honey. I'll say this for the lightning god when he sets out to do a job. That boat must have hit the Indian in the head and spun him right around. His face was like melted. Ooh. Even his moccasins were split. And a funny thing, his blouse was untouched. But the sleeves were gone. Apparently went up in smoke. And the flesh on his arms was peeled to the wrist. Do you think it really was lightning? Oh, no question about it. Freak accident. Strange how often people use that word about lightning, hmm? Freak. Yeah. You have to see it to know why. I mean, it looks... It looks deliberate. You know, like two guys are in a boat and one is struck by lightning and killed and the other one isn't touched. You know what I mean? Mm. The Indians think it's malicious spirits. Chindi, they call it. Well, it's nonsense, of course, but... I tell you, standing alone with Joe out there in the desert... Well, it was funny, but... It was like I could feel a... A presence. I kept looking over my shoulder. I told Joe and he said, Oh, Chin D. That's the death devil, Chin D. Jeff. Well, that, look, honey, I don't... was darn glad to get away from there. It's getting dark. That evil presence was... I better put on some more lights. Where, where's the light switch? By the front door. Oh, oh, yes. Um... Come on in the kitchen, dear. I've got a good, rich beef stew on the stove, and you'll feel better when you've eaten. Mm -hmm. What was the scenery like back there? In sky, sand, and sagebrush. The handiwork of Chin D. Storm. My goodness, it's black outside. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be Joe Purdy driving back to town now. Oh, lightning, look. Sheet lightning, isn't it? Scary, but beautiful. Lit up the whole hill. The Indians say it was little gambler's fault. His fault that lightning struck him? Mm-hmm. They say he rode a horse that fire from the sky hit last year. The Palomino? That's right. And he knew the lightning god gets mad if anybody takes what's his. You know, Kitty, I'm afraid we're going to have to give her up. Oh, no. She's a jewel, a prize winner, you know. And she's been so neglected. It's awful. Uncle Bush was very proud of her. How do you know? Well, I found a picture of him standing beside her the day she took first at some horse show. Well, we can't keep her. 
Jeff, you're not going to let them drive her away. Honey, there are forces around us that we don't dare contend with. Jeff, what are you talking about? You know it's superstition. It's easy to say that here in this cozy house. But out there, in those bleak burning dunes, I tell you, Katie, there was something. I could feel it. I feel it now. That was a close one, wasn't it? Yes. It's not sheet lightning. It's fork lightning. I'm going out and open the barn door. Jeff, Jeff, you're not. Not in this weather. I won't let you drive her, drive her out in, in, into this weather. What's the matter with you? You said yourself this is nonsense. It's bringing us trouble. Bad trouble. I can feel it coming like a hot wind. You've been out in the hot sun all day, and Joe Purdy has hypnotized you with this rubbish. Joe says the ranch hands will all leave if we try to keep her. Let them. We'll get others. They have good jobs here, and good jobs aren't so easy to get these days. But, honey, this morning I felt the way you do but damn it all, you haven't seen what I've seen. That Indian looked like he'd been scalped. I know, I saw it. I'm not just talking. Now, we've got to get rid of the horse. Jeff, listen to me, dear. If we give in now, we'll lose all authority. You know, I had an unpleasant scene with Kenneth earlier. He was very rude. We can't start out that way. This taboo, or, or whatever it is, is stupid and barbaric, and we're not going to yield to it. Now, I'm going to make some coffee. Stay away from the sink. And that's not superstition. The pipes form a perfect ground for the lightning. You mean I can't even run water for coffee? Not until the worst of the storm is over. Now, it's heading for us right now. now. Joe was telling me that before lightning strikes, you can sometimes feel an electric charge run through your body. You feel your hairs rise. It's the hand of Chin D. Then you're probably going to be hit, and the only thing to do is drop flat on the ground and pray. Oh, for Oh, hit a power line, I guess. Well, what do we do? Now, just keep calm. Lights will probably go on again. It's awfully dark. Have we got a flashlight? Yeah, but it's in the car back in town. Matches? Not since I quit smoking. There's got to be some candles around here. I saw some this morning. I remember now, I was putting things in the kitchen closet. I know where they are. There must be matches there, too. I'll get them. Let's see now. It's over here past the sink. Yes. There... In the back on the third day. Ah! Hey! Oh, what happened? Oh. Katie, are you all right? Oh. Katie, where are you? Groping his way through the darkness, Jeff struggles against the sudden rush of his own superstitious fear. But... One man's superstition is another man's firmly held faith. And perhaps the only safe conduct through the uncertainties of this valley of shadows is a healthy respect for the beliefs of others. Common courtesy or common sense should teach us that. If not, the powers that be may find harsher ways to bring the lesson home. I'll return shortly with Act Three. An unfamiliar house, a wrong step, and a headlong plunge into black emptiness. Katie Moore lies dazed and frightened on a rough cement floor. Are you? Are you all right? I think so. Don't try to get to me, Jeff. Wait. I'll see if I can get up. Oh! Oh! Are you hurt? Oh. I don't know. Yes, I... I think I fell down some steps. Don't move. Damn it, if I only had a match. Yes, there, there, there are steps here. Be, be careful. All right. Now, where, where are you, darling? Here. Oh, okay. All right, listen, dear. Do you think, do you think you can put your arm around my neck? Uh, I'll try. All right. ooh, ooh, ooh. Easy now. Huh? No. I better not try to move you then until we get some light. I gotta find those candles. I'll be right back, darling. Watch yourself. Right. Watch yourself. Oh. Tomorrow, oh, Ken, thank God you brought a light. I could see from the bunkhouse that the place was still dark. I 
Figured you didn't have a flashlight, so I brought a couple of kerosene lamps. But my wife fell down the cellar steps, and I'm afraid she's badly hurt. I didn't dare try to move her. Ken's brought us some lamps there. It just happened a minute ago. She fell down these steps. She was looking for candles. She thought she was going into the kitchen closet, and she opened the wrong door. I, I, I can't move. I can't turn over. Let's see. Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Mm. Looks like it's the shoulder. Oh, my collarbone. My legs feel all right. I can move them. All right. Slipping your arm around her waist, I think I can hold her so no. it won't be too bad. Right. But oh, it's easy going there. to hurt some, Mrs. Moore. Ready? Yes. All right. You think we dare lift her? Yes. I've got her. Tell me when you're ready. All right now. There. Oh. Easy, darling. Does it hurt? A little. I, I think I can walk up. Okay. okay. Nice and slow. Got you. Careful. Now, one oh. step at a time. Okay. Oh. Bring the lamp. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Take it easy, darling. Easy now. Just, <laughs> just a few more steps. Just get me to the sofa. Okay. Can we get the lights on again, Kenneth? Not a chance. Until the worst of this is over. I have a hunch it hit the generator. <laughs> Maybe I have to get back to the bunkhouse. All right, here we are now. Easy now, Mrs. Moore. Careful now. Easy, dear. I don't want to leave the ranch crew alone too long. They're, uh, they're rescued. Yes, I understand. All right, go ahead. And Ken? Yes? Go to the barn and get rid of her. My horse? No, no. Katie, oh, no. don't make waves. Not now. You're right, you're right. Do what you think's best. Thanks. It'll make things a whole lot easier for me. That was a bright flash. Set up the whole room. Oh, my God. What? Well, what is it? Did you see that? Yes, I saw. They can't do this to us. Stop them. I'll try. Well, what's the matter? What happened? The ranch hands, honey. They're leaving. In that last flash, I could see a long line of ponies. They're all just quietly riding away. Oh, Jeff, I'm frightened. All right, now we have to keep our heads here. We can leave, too. I don't know. The people have been in worse spots than this. Now that we have plenty of provisions, it can't rain forever. I never saw such a downfall. Ken? Did they take all the ponies? No. There's one left. But it was badly hurt a few days ago. Kenneth, why did they all leave us? There's a bad feeling here. You mean they're frightened? I'm damned if I understand it. They're not afraid of dying. It is the spirit of death they respect. It is Chindi. Indians are proud before men. They're not proud before their gods. Black Hat is a medicine man. He says Chindi is very angry now. He says tonight Chindi will take all Antelope Valley for his own. morning, I was running a fever. It rained for four days without let-up. But part of the time I was delirious, so my memories are confused. Try to drink this, dear. Oh, I want some orchids. Orchids, please, please, Jack. Honey, it's chicken broth. Oh, well, orchids. Try to take a little, honey. Mr. Moore, I'm afraid it's going to flood. A little yucky? There are sandbags in the barn. We've got to make a dike to protect the house. The river doesn't look that high. Remember, there's no vegetation in these hills to hold the water. A sudden downpour runs right off. Flash flood. Come on. Well, I let out a hole for a while. Hey, it's not enough. It's all we have. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm going to drop. We've done all we can do. Mr. Moore, we'll have to move to higher ground. When that water hits, the house may go. We can't, man. We can't move Kitty outdoors in her condition. We'll set a tarpaulin tent on the hill. Take blankets. Hurry. It'll come any time now. to get out. Look, great Scott, it's a wall of water. Will the house go? I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. It's like a dam at first. Thank God you got us out of there. Yeah. 
Yes, Kate. Yes. Where are we? We're in a tent, honey, on the hill back of the house. We're safe. Stay right here until the worst of the storm has passed. Are you warm enough, darling? What? Uh, here's the canteen. Let me lift you up. I'm, I'm so weak. Careful, honey. Was there I you asleep? What's the matter? to be quiet, honey. Ken, I've got to get a doctor. Now, if a man had a horse, could he make it out of here now? He might, if he knew his way. The barn is still standing. Yes. I'm going to see if that Palomino was there. You could never find the pass. Even in good weather, somebody would have to show you the first time in a storm like this. Look, I've got to do something. I can't stand by and let my wife die. I'll go out to the barn. No. I don't expect you to touch the horse, Ken. I understand these things better now. But you can see that I must go. First, let's see if the horse is still there. Yes, Dad. Oh. Yeah, the blanket has slipped off. Let me wrap it around you. Where's Ken? He went out to the barn a while ago. I, I've been dreaming. A man was riding by on a horse. And suddenly the horse burst into flames. Quiet, quiet, darling. <gasps> that sounds like who? It must be Ken. He's taking the Palomino. Ken, no! Ken, I'll go! Ken, come back! Has he deserted us, too? No, he's going for help. Oh, the poor guy. He must be frightened to death on that Palomino. <laughs> Mr. Moore. Ken, couldn't you get through? There's a truck coming. I met them a quarter of a mile down. Joe is with them. It's search and rescue from town. Search and rescue? That's a local organization. They have special equipment. Mostly they go after hunters who get lost in the San Francisco peaks. Well, how do they know about us? The ranch hand sold them. They managed to throw a makeshift bridge across the Yaki down below. Your road is mostly washed out. But they can make it slowly. Thank God. Ken. Yeah? Ken, I want to thank you for what you did. I know what it meant. It's yes, all right. Look, we were wrong, Ken. We we behaved badly. But when you've lived all your life a certain way and believed certain things, it's just hard to... Well, anyway, everything will be okay now. Uh, I hope you're right. Uh-oh. We better get back under the top when the rain's starting again. Chin D circled around. It's coming from the other side now. Nonsense, man. We'll soon be out of here. The men from search and rescue were carrying me on a stretcher when it happened. Jeff was beside me. Ken was about ten feet ahead. Suddenly I felt it. A tingling sensation through my body. The small hairs on my forearms seemed to rise. I knew that Kenneth felt it too. He turned and looked up at the sky, his eyes staring wildly. There was a blinding flash. Then Ken was lying on the ground. Ken! Oh my God! Kenneth! Don't try to get up, Kitty. Joe. Joe, is he... Yes. He's dead. It's my fault. We goaded him into riding that horse. I wouldn't let him go. I, I, I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. I'll never forgive myself. I'm a murderer. No, no, Mr. Moore, it's not your fault. We don't control these things. They're accidents. You, you said Chindi would kill anyone who touched his property. You said it. You know you did. It is my fault. It is. It is. I killed Katie, him. Katie, I killed please, him. Please, I killed him. Please. He saved our lives. And, Katie, and now, I stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you have got to get this straight now. It was an accident. Do you hear me? An accident. I, 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 no, I killed him. I'll never forgive myself. It was not an accident. You all know what it was. Why don't you say it? It was, it, it was Chindi. Oh, God, forgive me. I, I, I killed the man. She was to blame all her life. She's hysterical. Chin D. Chin D. Katie, listen to me. There is no Chin D. What happened was an accident. You've got to hold on to that fact. There's the horse. Get rid of her. Drive her away. Take Mrs. Moore to the truck, boys. We'll have to come back for Kenneth later. No, no. I, I, I won't go unless you bring Kenneth, too. You're not going to leave him here alone. Katie, watch me. I'm going to ride that Palomino. Cindy! 
I'm taking your horse, Cindy. I defy you. If you're there, show us your power now. I defy you. There is no Cindy. <laughs> Ms. Moore, you there? Oh, just, just Mr. Murchison. Oh, come on in. Oh, your hands are full. Just a second, I'll get the screen off. My, my wife sent this over to you. How nice. Well, she oh. she remembered you always did like it. Banana bread. Uh, yeah. Well, we're glad to have you back with us in Connecticut. We thought we'd lost you to the West. Oh, it's good to be back. Did you see Jeff? He's working over the edge of the wood. There's a tree, he says, has to come down. It looks sturdy enough to me. Well, if he's talking about the oak near the clump of white birch, it ain't as solid as it looks. Are you planning to stay now for good? Oh, yes. We we sold everything we owned out west. It was beautiful. Mary and I drove out there once. It was all too big for me, all too, well, too much. The Connecticut is more cozy. Yeah. Well, I'll be getting along. I want to see Jeff. There's something I should tell him about that tree. Uh, tell Mrs. Murchison I'll be over to see her as soon as I get settled. Well, if we can help, just let us know. Oh, what was that? Sounds like he felled the tree. Uh, uh, he wasn't going to chop it down. Jeff! Jeff! <laughs> you, you all right, Jeff? Jeff! Mr. Murchison, oh. look! Go oh. back. Call the police. Oh. Tell them to send an ambulance. We can't Please. move that tree, just the two of us. Now, quick, girl, quick. Then get the Hesser boys. They're walking on the fence. I'm coming, son. Oh, help. <gasps> Mr. Murchison, help me. Lou Hesser will be here in a minute. We'll try to move the tree off you. I don't know what happened. I, I just stabbed it. I, I was coming to tell you, Jeff. It's, it's rotten all the way through. You see, that tree was struck years ago by lightning. <laughs> Jeff Moore is in a wheelchair now. Nobody knows just why. The doctors say he suffered no permanent injury when that tree fell. But sometimes late at night, when she hears the wind rising, the rain beginning to fall, Katie's thoughts go back to Antelope Valley and Kenneth Yazzie and the Palomino. And she wonders. I'll be back shortly. Lightning strikes, invoking a tribal taboo. Result? Two dead men and a house plunged into darkness. Two months, and 3,000 miles later, a third man is struck down. Coincidence, of course. But what is coincidence? A word. A word we use to explain what we cannot explain. Our cast included Ruby D, Mandel Kramer, Leon Janney, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.